This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Doyle Davidson, servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas, sent by God to your house to declare to you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, tell us what the gospel is, how that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to scripture, he was buried, he rose again, the third day, according to the scripture. Amen. The word is, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, so he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the broken heart, preach deliverance to the captives, recover the sight to the blind, set at liberty them that are bruised. The word is not thee. Even in your heart, in your mouth, is a word of faith. So I preach, you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. With the heart, man, believe it unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, but there's a power of God unto salvation. If you ever want to believe it, to the Jew verse, and also to the Greek, therein is the righteousness of God, revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by his faith. I want to welcome everyone receiving this broadcast on live stream, Roku, Apple TV, YouTube, or other devices. Kathy Davidson, co-host, on the left, good morning, how are you? I'm doing well. Good. Are you ready? Oh, no, I've got to my right, uh, Catherine Courier is present here living in Colorado, but we're picking her up there on this network. Good morning, Kathy. Good morning. Hey, Amen. So, well, you got something you'd like to say? No, I don't believe so. Good. Not good that you don't have anything to say. Sorry. <laughs> Sounded terrible, Doyle. Amen. <laughs> I wanted you to. All right, Katie, let's have bring the minds on. Amen.
Yes, sir. Amen. I believe we better talk on Mark 10 about the hundredfold return and personally Amen. applying to me. Amen. All right? All right. Mark 10, I'm going to begin in verse 28. Right. And Peter began to say unto him, lo, lo, and he's talking to Jesus, we have left all and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, well, no, thank you, Lord. God says I need to start a little before. I'm going to begin in verse 23. And there's a reason. 23, and Jesus looked round about and said unto his disciples, how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And his disciples were astonished at his words, but Jesus answered again and said unto them, children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches? to enter into the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. They were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, who then can be saved? And Jesus looking upon them saith, with men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. Then Peter began to say unto Jesus, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there's no man that has left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the world to come eternal life. But many that are first shall be last and the last first. God backed you up, didn't he? He had to back me up, yeah. <laughs> Because in probably everybody's eyes but yours, at least in mine, you were a rich man. Me? Yeah. I was. You were. I'm not. You had houses and lands and boats and investments and cattle and horses and all that other good stuff. <laughs> well, I think it's interesting. In the 28th verse, there's a three-lettered word that will get you. Amen. And it's A-L-L. -L. Isn't that right? That's right. Would you read it again? It says, Then Peter began to say unto Jesus, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. And Jesus said, Jesus answered, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that has left house, left what? Left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake in the Gospels. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brethren, and sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands, persecutions and in a world to come eternal life amen okay I'm going to po point out to the world what God has required of me and I'm going to bring you to the place and show you that I've left all amen all Every bit. All right? Amen. I had a greedy heart, covetous. I was a Davidson. Still am. <laughs> they like land, cattle, horses. They had them. My great grandfather, a cattle a landowner a fruit grower a house builder mover he was a wealthy man so 
I had that kind of heart. I thought, that's what I like. I didn't know what God wanted. I'm going to say something you won't like. I didn't care. And neither do you. Amen. Did you get that? Amen. Did you know that's the problem? Oh, yeah. We don't care what God wants. Amen. We don't think God's got any right to tell us anything. That's right. Except save us and take us to heaven. That's right. Isn't that terrible? Amen. He owns it all. Would you read Psalm 24, 1? Sure will. A scripture that changed my life. Thank you. Psalm 24, 1. The earth is the Lord's. What? The earth is the Lord's. It is? It is. <laughs> Isn't that a shame? Amen. It is? Now let's move on with this. Say, not only is the earth the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. And what? And the fullness thereof. Oh, we own it all, huh? That's every bit of it. Yeah. And they that dwell therein. And they he owns us. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Or is a human race deceived? <laughs> Amen. I had a conversation with a person once and it made me laugh. They were talking about how they were moving away from all this, from God, from everything, and they were going to live in the mountains or around the mountains oh, sure. in Colorado. And, and, you know, that, that, that they just couldn't do this, that whatever. And I laughed, and the Spirit of God came out of my mouth, and I said, you know what? Those beautiful mountains, I know the man that made them. Did you, would you finish that verse? It says, the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. Isn't that amazing? Amen. So... We actually don't own anything. That's right. And we can't. That's right. And we can't rent from God. Amen. And we can't buy from God. Amen. You can't get around God. Amen. If you think I wasn't raised with a warped heart and mind. You're badly mistaken. As you said earlier, you were out to be a land baron. Sure. What's wrong with that? That's right. People praise you for that. And you know what? Some people, some people would say, well, the Lord's going to give you the desire of your heart. <laughs> yeah, he sure will. After he puts it in your heart. That's right. After he takes out all the other desires, right. Anyway, I want to be a veterinarian. He said no. Be a minister of the gospel. I didn't believe. I did not believe. How do you know? Because he told me so. That was my problem. Unbelief. Did you know that's your problem? That's right. Unbelief. Amen. Did you know that's everybody's problem? Unbelief? That's a miserable thing to have. Unbelief. So, after eight years, after getting graduating from the university, eight years of practice, the Lord said, sell it. I did. You know what? He saw to it that it cost me everything that I'd earned in the years that I worked. And he told me, no, I don't want that. All right? All right. Now, 
all is just what it means. So I own two barns, one in Texas, 50 acres, and one in Missouri, 143. And God said, be rid of them. I sold them. I sold them. I own some cattle. God said, sell them. I own some decent horses. And God saw to it that I sold them. <laughs> I had some investments. Own some bank stock. Sold that. I own uh, some more stock. I sold that. I own stock in a country club. I sold that. Um, you had some insurance policies. Oh, man. I was insured. I tell you, if I'd have died, Patty and Kathy had been rich. <laughs> Pitiful. Do you know that? Amen. Thank you. Amen. But I'm still alive, and Kathy's still alive, and Patty's in heaven. Amen. So. I think I had four or five insurance policies. Some was long time, some were just insured me for a few years. Got rid of every one of them. You say, you don't have any insurance? Mm -mm, no. Do you have any insurance at all? No. Only what's required by law. Amen. 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 Well, what if, don't give me that what if stuff. I do not belong to the what if club. I'm a member of the body of Christ. And the Lord owns it. Everything, every bit of it. Well, when I moved back to McKinney in 77, I bought a house on an acre and a quarter in Fairview and lived there for 27 years. And when I came to Plano, I gave that house and the acre to Porter, I gave it away. Free. No, no strings. And I got to Plano, I leased a few weeks, a few months, bought a house. I owned it until January this year. January last year. Huh? January of last year. Oh, that's right. Thank you. Amen. In 17. Right. Right. And January 17, God told me, give it to water of life. That's what I did. God owns water of life. Amen. Now, God owns my house. That wasn't mine anyway. It was his. <laughs> he just took possession of it. And he didn't pay me. He 
made it. Now, it was the one I gave away in Fairview and praised to 27. The one I gave away in Plano and praised 345. The Lord Water Black now owns a house I live in and the furniture that's in it. It owns the Cadillac that Kathy drives, the Lord does, owns the Tahoe that everybody drives, mm -hmm. but me. <laughs> Amen. But I'm going there again. And that's it. Guess what? That's all. That's all. I've left all. I thought I'd left all when I left Fairview. But I left all. I want to make a point to add into this, the people that are listening, and you do not have a salary. Wait, what? You do not have a salary. No, I don't. No, I don't have a salary. Right. You live off of love offering. Love offering. Right. So I don't own anything. Now, I do have Social Security, which I never wanted, and but I'd never take a penny of it. But I gave so much over the years, Amen. it would take me nine years to get it back without the government committing one penny to it. And you keep paying into it. I still am. And when you get it, you pretty much all the time give it away because I write the checks. Right. Yeah. So I started taking it because I had to pay. I remember you tried to not take it. Right. You tried to tell them you, you wanted out of it, and they came back and said, oh, no. Right. You have paid in it too long. You're stuck with the money in there. Right. And so it was right to take it. I'd like for the government to buy it from me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would, full price. Yeah. Plus 10%. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm a businessman, but they won't do it. Amen. Amen. So, I have that, that income. And I practically give that away every month. And will. I want to. So that's all. I forsook all. Left all. And did you know only this year, this year, did the hundred pole kick in. Amen. It took me forever to see it. You follow me? I follow you. Amen. But the money that's been made available to me by the Lord only became available this year. Eighteen. Follow me? Amen. In 17, I left all. Amen. Now, this year, the Lord made available to me 
$2,333,000. He made that available to me. And he tells me when I can use it. It's his. And where? When? Well, how do you eat? Oh, he gives money to me to eat. I can eat anywhere the best place you can eat. I eat a lot of cheese and crackers. You sure do. <laughs> what? You sure do. Amen. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you, at 86, I weigh maybe two pounds more than I did when I was uh, 18. Maybe two pounds. Maybe two and a half. But I can cut the cheese and crackers down. Right? Amen. But I can eat more, too. Yeah. Amen. Yep. The other night you said, I'm splurging. Give me two more pieces. I said what? You're splurging. Give me two more pieces of cheese. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Amen. Do you eat me? Oh, yes. I'm not a vegetarian. You are far from a vegetarian. <laughs> Amen. Do you eat celery? <laughs> no, thank you. I don't like the lignin in the celery. Yeah, I know. You won't. You don't like um, romaine lettuce either. No, I don't. <laughs> I like garden lettuce. That's right. Now, there are certain things that I pass by. If you like them, fine. Somebody's got to eat them. <laughs> Amen. Do you like eggs? Well, certainly. Aren't you afraid to eat eggs? I'm not afraid to eat anything. I sanctify it. Now. Even my cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. You mean you can eat anything? I can eat anything in, unless I don't want to. And I can eat what I don't want to. Sanctify it. Amen. Do you? In the Word of God, you eat what is set before you. That's right. And there are a couple times you've asked, what are you setting before me? <laughs> I was in a place or two. I wondered what they were setting before me. And uh, sanctified it holy. <laughs> W-H-O-L-L-Y. Yeah. Amen. Have we said enough that people know what all is? You know, the, 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 the man that said this was Peter. Yeah. And Jesus basically told Peter that you're going to get a hundredfold. That's right. And we know that Peter, in the book of Acts, received a hundredfold in children and mothers and fathers because the first day he preached with the Holy Ghost, he got 3,000 born again, and he became their spiritual father. That's right. And he had bukus, it's the only word I can think of, a whole lot of spiritual children. And not only that, but great grace was on him, and the people were coming to Jerusalem to just lay their sick and tormented in 
Peter's path that the shadow of Peter might come on them. Amen. I would say that is worth a whole lot more than a house oh, and yeah. some lands. Well, the Lord says you receive all these back, right? Right. Right. Wait, wait, read that. It's a, all right. It says he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time, not in when he gets to heaven. Houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in a world to come, eternal life. Would you read that word? Receive? You shall receive a hundredfold. It doesn't say own it. That's right. Amen. You know, Paul makes a great statement, and I want to read it, because it, it, it really does sum up a lot of your life. It says, I'm going to, let's see. I'm going to begin in verse 5. It says, In stripes and imprisonments and tumults and labors and watchings, which is up all night, and fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and well known, is dying, and behold, we live, is chastened, and not killed. As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. And this next phrase, as poor, yet making many rich, is having nothing, and yet possessing all things. Amen. That was Paul. Make many people rich. Right. And it says, as poor, as having nothing, and yet possessing all things. Did you know I've made many rich? You have made many rich. Did you know not many rich people join me? <laughs> oh, yeah. We have proof of it. The aerial shot of the church in 19, was it 83? Right. Yeah. There wasn't a decent-looking car except for yours in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Thank God. Amen. You have everyone that has heard your word and done it has been blessed and is doing well. Yeah. Some did so well, they put their eyes on the money and now they're gone. That's right. They were so God too. Yeah. And they think now they can do what they want to and call it God. Sorry, you sow to the flesh, you reap to the flesh. Corruption. Amen. Philippians 3, we need to look at that. All right. Or is it more? About fruit? I think it's, I think it's more. Is it? Yes. Thank what you. verse? Fruit. Why? About giving. Philippians 4? Yeah. Okay. Starting 14, I guess. Okay. It says, Notwithstanding, not with understanding, you have done well, that you did communicate with my affliction. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me. It's concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again unto my necessity. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Ephrodius the things which are sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Fruit. Abound, what did I say? Yeah, fruit abound to their account. To their account. Yeah, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Amen. You know, I, you've shared before many times. When I grew up in the denominational church, and I heard about giving and, and tithing and, and doing that kind of thing, I did it because I knew it was God. But what I was not taught, 
was that when I gave, I should expect to receive. Even though I did, I did not know that that was okay with God, that he would give back to you. Amen. I mean, God kept me, gave me everything I needed. I was never, never lacked, but I did not know that that was that working. Amen. Well, thank God I could read the Bible. But I believe what the Bible says. Amen. At least I agree with it. And that is you're going to be rewarded. Amen. For obeying God. For obedience. Yeah, you know why a lot of people have no idea that they will be rewarded? Because they never obey God. Amen. They just belong to a religious organization and call it God's house. Amen. Well, God doesn't even own those houses. I'm sorry, he does. He owns them, and you steal from them. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I mean, I heard this message when I first got here, and one of the things that caught my attention was when you ministered, and I'd read it before many times, but it says, you will either love God or you'll love money. And some just, they say, I believe, the, I believe the Bible, but they cannot let go of that dollar, thinking that it'll never come back. I don't know if it's sixth chapter of Matthew. I believe it is. I think where you hate God and love the other one. That's right. It says, verse, it's uh, Matthew 6, verse 24. No man can serve two masters. Amen. For either will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You can't serve them both. I tell you, that was tough for me to see that I love money and not God. Amen. You can't love them both. Amen. Doesn't that say that? That's what it says. Would you read that again? Sure will. No man can serve, and that, if you look that word up, it's women too. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Isn't that mammon amazing? Is you know, people take this that, well, then if I serve God, I'm going to be poor. Going to be poor? Yeah. If I serve God, I'm going to be poor, and that has nothing to do with it. If you serve God. Yeah. No, if you serve religion, you're going to be... That's, you're going there to, you go. You're going to be terrible. <laughs> you're going to take the oath of poverty whether you like it or not. <laughs> right. Look, I don't own anything. But I live better than many people. Amen. Right? That gospel made us rich. Amen. That gospel made us rich. And the reason it does is because we obey God. And whatever he wants, he can have. And God will give it back. I'm, I'm going to tell you the reason you can't understand God you try to do it with your mind your intellect you cannot do that it's spiritually discerned Amen. by the spirit of God in your heart Amen. and your intellect is part of your soul well intellect emotion so, and the Spirit of God does not dwell between your ears. Amen. He's in the heart. But you know what he'll do? He'll renew your mind. Now, that was a tough thing for me to accept. And so God did something for me. 
I was a veterinarian at a horse that they showed in a horse show. A man was way too heavy for the horse, rode him. He was a good one. And the judge didn't like the man riding the horse. And he worked him and worked him and worked him. And that big overweight guy rode that horse into the ground. And I was his veterinarian for three or four months. I couldn't do a thing for him. I said, call in another person, another vet. They did. An equine man, he came in, he said, I just can't disagree with you. And I don't know what I'd do for him either. So, then he was injured. And he needed to be put down. That means to sleep dead. You get it? Now, his spirit, that horse's spirit's on the earth. How do you know? Ecclesiastes told me, though, told me that. Did you know the spirit of your cat's on the earth? Mm -hmm. And your dog. You know where your spirit's at? It's either in heaven or in hell. Amen. Amen. Now, and I want you to be in heaven. Amen. So anyway, they uh, called me up and said, put the horse to sleep. <laughs> I said, uh, write me a letter. You know what they want to do is hang me. So they wrote me a letter. And they said in the letter, we want an anamortem report, that's before death, and a postmortem report after death. Oh. Uh -huh. I said, I don't think this is very good. And the Lord just blew me away. He said, I have confidence in your decision. I said, you what? I have confidence in your decision. Would you say that again? You don't talk to Jesus this way if you're smart. But I was wise. I said it the third time. Then I said, Lord, this must be you. Must be you. So, they sent me Authorization to euthanize the horse, put him down, dead, I did. But I did an anamortem report first. Then I sent all the tissues to a laboratory in Dallas after he was dead and had them all uh, examined by a histologist. Ha ha. Or A pathologist, what's a histologist? They study tissues, cells. Pathologists do the same thing, but not like histologists. Anyway, uh, got the report back. I made one difference in the anamortem the report before the horse was put down, where he died, and the postmortem. One. 
They couldn't sue me on that one. Amen. So I was not very comfortable with this, and God sent an osteopathic physician to water blood. And I told him about that, and he said, you know why the Lord said that to you? No. You have the mind of Christ. Amen. Yes, I know. That's what they all say. What time is it? Oh, we have about 12 minutes left. Good. So, if you would turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and wait and read to the end, but I'm going to show you why I have the mind of Christ and why you don't. All right? Are you ready? 1 Corinthians chapter 2. This. I'm going to tell you exactly why you don't have the mind of Christ. Why you don't have. Why I do have. Let's go. Beginning in verse 1, is that what you said? Yes. All right. Chapter 2, verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom. To oh. Came not with excellency, excellency of speech or wisdom. Amen. Okay? Let's go. Declaring unto you the testimony of God. Declaring unto you the testimony of God with excellent speech ha, ha, and wisdom. No. I didn't come that way. How did I come? For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. There you are. Before you even met me, I determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. You know, I thought I should go study Greek. Lord said, you don't have time. <laughs> you don't have time to study Greek. You've got concordances and dictionaries, and that's all you need. Amen. You know what the Lord told me that day? These concordances and dictionaries were right. And whether or not, he'll show you Amen. Amen. what's wrong. Was that a relief? You see, I've been to university six years. Got two degrees. And I don't trust much of anything. I recently had some, uh, I'm not telling this. <laughs> Would you read on? Sure will. Verse 3, I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. I've been with you in weakness, much fear, and tremble, tremble, tremble. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. My what? My speech and my preaching is not with man's wisdom. Did you get that? Would you read that again? Sure will. But my, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith 
should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Demonstration of what? Of the Spirit. And faith. And power. And of power. Read That's it. your faith. Okay. Um, oh, you're right. Go yeah. On. That my, right, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Demonstration of the Spirit and what else? And of power. 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 Now let me tell you, a big danger in the church. All you want is power. All you want is power. All you want is power. You might be a sorcerer. Uh -huh. Did you know in the book of Exodus, the sorcerers and God's men, Aaron and Moses, could do the same thing. Aaron and Moses could do something, demonstrate the power. Sorcerers, the same thing. That scared this guy. You see, I've been in meetings where women especially, oh my goodness, Amen. love to demonstrate the word of knowledge and wisdom. Yeah. And it's got that power. But it cannot do what God's power can do. All right, Moses, magicians, threw down the rods. Maybe Moses did first. Moses did first. He did, yeah. And then the magicians right. did. And Moses rod eight thirds up, right? Right. Okay. Next, what happened? Moses uh, threw up held up the rod and the waters turned to blood. The what? Said Moses held up the rod and the rod and the water turned into blood. Okay. The Nile, yes. All right. Magicians did the same. Magicians could do the same thing. All right. What was next? Uh, the frogs. The what? The frogs. Frogs. Tadpoles. Yeah, oh, the frogs. You saying frogs? Yes. Thank you. My ears don't catch what you say. But my mouth spells frogs, F-R-O-G-S. <laughs> That's right. He called the frogs upon the land. The magicians did the same thing. Right. And the frogs. And the frogs came up from both. Then, then what Moses did. And Moses called the dust to become lice. And the magicians could not do that. And what they say? They said, this is the finger of God. You see, your power, honey, will only go so far. Don't call me, honey, but I just did. <laughs> Your power will just go so far, but mine just keeps going. Oh, I'm looking toward the days ahead when the Lord is it work? The Spirit of God is working through the Lord. The Father is at work through His servant. Amen. Servants. Amen. And where I just stand back and watch Amen. God work His power. Are we about out of time? We've got about three minutes left. How much? Three minutes left. Oh, man, this is beautiful. God doing this and me watching? Oh, sure, I'll lay hands on when God tells me to. But it says, lay hands on no man suddenly. Amen. Neither be a partaker of another man's sins. Full gospel, I was 
Well, gosh, for men's fellowship a long time, and I went to a lot of full gospel meetings, and I tell you, those people, most of them that operated full gospel, that were in charge of full gospel, they couldn't wait to lay their hands on you. No, they couldn't. They, they'd transmit sin to you, but they'd pick up people's sins. Listen, the Word of God means what it says. I won't let certain people keep their hands on me long. I said, that's enough. I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I don't want your devils. Amen. 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 Once, I had some dinner guests, and I tried to be cordial to my wife, Nice. I said, Patty, pick that woman's feet up, check the length of her legs. Patty did. For nine months, Patty was confused. Confused. I said, what has happened to Patty? Well, you told her to pick the woman's legs up, her feet up and check her legs her length, and Patty didn't have the faith to do it. How you like that? Amen. Amen. I set her free by the power of God. Did you know at this church one morning I had a blind up there, a whole bunch. And the Lord had me go down the line. Don't touch that one. Don't touch that one. Six women left. God said, don't touch it. Pray for them. Amen. That afternoon, I got a phone call from a woman. She said, you obeyed the devil this morning. And you denied me the right to get healed. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. I said, uh, I'd like to talk to you tonight and your husband. All right? They wouldn't come in. They were out front. I went out there. She started to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I obeyed God. I did what God told me. In a minute or two, her husband said, Sir, my wife, never saw a man she could get along with. And she doesn't like pastors. Could you believe that there are women that could be that way? That <laughs> How come you chuckle? <laughs> or there'd be men that could be that way? Isn't that amazing? You know, you made a very good point, and there's a lot of women in the charismatic movement that insist that nothing will happen unless the man lays hands on them. Yeah. But we just read earlier that Peter's shadow healed everybody in the street. Amen. You got faith? Use it. Well, let me tell you, folks. I will not lay hands on everybody. I only lay hands on those God tells me. Amen. So get ready, because it won't be long. You'll be seeing me point to you, and you'll be healed. Amen. 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 I was in Zimbabwe once, and they were in the building about 600 and they had to be out in 10 minutes to make transportation. I said, okay, I'll tell you what, what I want you to do. I'll have you pray in tongues for eight 
minutes or 10, whatever. And then you can go. And I'll tell you, they did. And I said, all right, we got a minute. Tell me, how many of you got healed? Up went the hands. What happened? You told them, don't you pray for yourself. That's right. You pray for your neighbor. That's right. Yeah. We're going to finish it. Well, you finished right, finish it right there. I said, if you pray for yourself, it's a devil. Hey, Bartholomew laughed. He said, I never heard anybody say that. Amen. Amen. And there were people that were healed. Huh? And there were people that were healed. A bunch. Yes. A bunch. I watched this house one Sunday morning for an hour by the power of God deliver people, men, women, children from witchcraft Never touched a one of them. Amen. I'm out of time. Grace, mercy. Mercy, grace, mercy, grace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.